So I just want to show you a small video before I introduce myself. I'm going to detail about my weight loss journey. My name is Aysal Ansari and I've been training for three years. I used to weigh 128 kilos and three years ago is when I decided to change my life. Three years ago, my twin brother, who's a fitness fan, told me that if I do not change my lifestyle, uh, I would, my health would suffer. So this is the time where I had to make a change. My trainer, Nick, is the one that motivated me to uh, push harder and uh, be the fittest I could be. I train usually five to six times a week, uh, where I tend to mix up cardio workouts, uh, circuit training, and weightlifting. I eat five small meals a day, uh, which is a mix of protein and carbs. Protein, for example, meat, uh, chicken, and carbs like sweet potato or brown rice. Rest is important as you need to recover your muscles. For me, I take one day off a week. When I started, my friends and family were the ones that motivated me, but now I am motivating and inspiring other people. There's some days where I really don't want to train, but seeing results is what keeps you motivated. Taking the challenge was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Before starting, I thought it was going to be very easy, but as soon as I started, it was just harder and harder. But I kept on pushing and pushing till the end. My mind said I couldn't do this, but I pushed harder and harder and proud of myself for finishing it. During the challenge, I wasn't competing with anyone. I was competing with myself to become better. My idea of an athlete is someone who is motivated, inspiring, and disciplined. If I would say something to the old me, I would say, get off the couch, live a healthy lifestyle, and start training. Do you want me to cry? <laughs> <laughs> So, once again, my name is Isa Ahmed Dada Ansari from Dubai, uh, lived here all my life, moved to Switzerland and did my bachelor's in hospitality management and moved back here and currently working for the family business, which is the Al Ansari Group. So, my weight loss journey. So you've seen from the video itself that till today I've lost around 72 kilos of weight. And there are several reasons to why I had to change my lifestyle and who inspired me and motivated me to change my lifestyle. Here's just a just quick general information for you guys to know. Now, we are ranked, UAE is ranked 15th worldwide with obesity and diabetes type 2. Now, this is something scary, something we need to look at, something we need to do, live a healthier and more active lifestyle. And of course, there's ways to do that. The average rate of heart attack here in the UAE is 45 years old, comparing to the rest of the world that's 65 years old. Now, why is that? Very easy. And I think we all agree with these points. Number one, very easy lifestyle. Now, in the UAE, not UAE only, I would say, I would say the Middle East itself, we live a very easy lifestyle. What do I mean by that? Now, we have everything provided for us 24 seven. The malls, Restaurants are open till midnight. I've lived in Europe. I exactly know how people live over there and how people live here in the Middle East. Restaurants are open till midnight. A bottle of water could be delivered right outside your doorstep. And I know that you should all agree with me with that. Another problem is the culture. Now, the Ramadan is one of the main, so if you guys know what Ramadan is, it's a month where the Muslims fast, so it's a holy month. And people think, or they get that thinking that they're gonna lose weight in Ramadan. Why is that? It's because you have one meal, or let's say two meals a day. You break your fast, 
And then you have the meal right before you sleep. And you're fasting all day. So mentally you'll be like, oh, I'm going to lose weight, it's fine, I could eat whatever I want to eat. Which is not true. Because you're fasting all day, and, and you suddenly break your fast, with, till you hit a food coma stage, it's very different. You eat rice, carbs, uh, potatoes. I've seen it, I've experienced myself back in 2008. In Ramadan, in a span of 30 days, I've gained six kilos. Now, put in mind, I'd had one meal because I used to go to school, so I'd sleep early, so I'd just break my fast. That's it, just one meal for 30 days, one meal per day. But it's because the food I used to eat when I used to break my fast was unhealthy. Of course, high temperature. We live in an area where it reaches 48, 49 degrees, so it does limit us from doing any outdoor activities. My journey. So, back in 2012, so you know, I reached a stage where I was around 128 kilos. Now, put in mind, I was the only unhealthy person in the family. I have a twin brother, who's a fitness fanatic, and fit till now, family all fit, but I was the person who was, lo I love chocolates, desserts, sweets, so it was a big, big problem for me. So 2012, uh, you know, reaching uh, you know, the weight I was, the maximum weight I had ever been in my life, feeling uncomfortable, uh, being bullied in school, uh, not living a very healthy lifestyle. I wasn't, getting interac wasn't interacting in any social activities because I was embarrassed from how I looked and how I was. Now, my twin brother, obviously, I, was, I, was, I, was, I would never forget this day. I was at home with him, uh, you know, on a Friday. And he was doing this online workout. And he's like, Asa, why don't you come and join? And I was just sitting. He's like, come for 30 seconds, one minute, just join this high intensity workout. I don't know if you guys heard of it. So I'm like, okay, why not? Trust me, I could not even last 30, 30 seconds. Now, being pre-diabetic was not easy. Why was that? The amount of sugar I used to have was, it was too much. It was, I used to have three main meals at home, but then during, for example, breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner, it was just sweets after sweets after sweets. So obviously having, being pre-diabetic was not easy at all. And doctors told me, I said, the only way you could change it is by changing your lifestyle. You need to change the way you live. You need to start being more active. Now, when I went to the doctor, he told me, I said, you have two choices. You either do it naturally, which is going to take three, four, five, six years to lose all this weight, or you do the easy way, which is the gastro bypass operation. I don't know if you guys heard of it. Whereas elastic band, tighten up your stomach, and that, you, know, you could lose weight with eating small amounts of food in a, sh uh, a short period of time. Now, I'm like, okay, let me do it the hard way. Let me do it naturally. It's going to take a lot of time, but it's natural. You know, it's no operations involved. So sh I, I just had to change the way I eat. And of course, I had to start training. <laughs> now, while I'm laughing, training, before 2012, I had no clue what a gym was. I was literally the laziest person on earth, I would say. Walking for me was very tiring. Like going to the malls was a big mission just to go with the family, just to walk for like half an hour to an hour. And you know, you know ladies, gents, I think you all agree, ladies go there for six, seven hours without realizing on the mall, and else we have to follow them, of course. So obviously when I decided to do it the natural way, I had to take it step by step. Now, it's really, really important to set goals. Now, I'm not talking about fitness-wise, but I'm talking in general. Setting goals is really important. Trust me, without setting any goal, you will not reach to where you want to be. So number one was for me to set a goal that within the first six months, I want to lose five to eight kilos. Did I do it? 100%. How did I do it? I obviously got into, now, I wouldn't, I'm not going to say that I went into training really fast. No, I started, let's say, baby steps, so step by steps. Started getting more active. Started going to the mall for a walk, you know, going with the family for a walk on Friday around the park. So getting, getting more active was step number one. Step number two was my eating. Now, that was the hardest part, especially the desserts and the sweets. I had to put that away completely. Junk food, yes, I would say I'd had a fairly amount of junk food per week, at least twice a week, used to. 
junk food like KFC, Burger King, Subway. Now, Subway is junk food for those of you, a healthy junk food, let's say. But it is considered as being a junk food, a junk meal. So, got a trainer on board, started doing all these active, you know, physical activities, and then started slowly introducing myself into training. Gym, uh, workout, strength training, high intensity training. Did I give up? Yes, I did. Was it challenging? 100% or 101%. It was very, very challenging to lose all that weight. Now, here's some pictures of me before and after. Uh, now, this is when I was in school, in the process, let's say, of, you know, you shouldn't say that, in the process of getting bigger on the left side. And then this is on the right side is when I've actually lost 30 kilos already. And then here's a six month gap difference in between some of the pictures and one year gap in between some of the pictures. And this is, uh, I would say, around six months ago, five to six months ago. Now, race is accomplished. Now, obviously, as I said, setting goals is very important. And number two, having that positive mindset. Now, if someone comes up to me and be like, okay, what are you doing today? Oh, I have work and all that, and then I have gym. Oh, I have gym. No, it shouldn't be that way. It should be part of your lifestyle. Lifestyle, lifestyle, lifestyle. You change your lifestyle. I have a lot of people here who come up to me uh, in Dubai, in the UAE. They're like, Asa, I want to lose 10 kilos. I'm like, perfect. How are you going to do it? Well, just have one meal a day. Or have something called the water diet, which, trust me, I have a lot of people or friends, I would say, that try that out, which you drink water, coffee, and green tea for one week. That's it, full stop. I don't know how they do it, but I have a friend, a very close friend of mine, who's done it for five days, but it was useless because after that five days, he went back to normal eating and gained not only the weight he used to be in, but double. So what's the most important thing, of course, I said is lifestyle, now training, and of course, the eating habit. Now eating, how did my eating plans change? I went from eating three meals a day, three, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, to eating five to six meals a day every two hours. Small meals, small quantity. Trust me, it works much better than having three main meals a day. Now, obviously, in the Arab culture, when you go on a Friday to your grandmother's house and they see you with the small meals, they think you're sick. They're like, what are you eating? Eat some rice, majboos, and all that. I'm like, no, I'm on a diet. I'm eating something healthy, green veg and chicken. They're like, no, no, Habibi. Please eat, it's Friday. But that's the way it changed. For five meals a day, purely green veg and protein in every single meal. Do I have carbs? 100%. Carbs, I tend to have it before my workout and after my workout. That's it. So these are some of the pictures of some races I've accomplished. So the last one I did, I don't know if you heard of it, was the vertical marathon, which was the Emirates Towers uh, well, running up 1,422 steps. Uh, finished it, got first place, finished it in 6 minutes and 30 seconds. It was something that I wanted to challenge myself in. Now trust me, it was bizarre. There were 500 people in the emergency exit trying to push one another just to climb up and win. So the first 10 floors were very tough. And I put in mind, emergency exit, no air, and surrounded by 500 people it was very tough. But of course, the higher you get, the crowd just goes less and less and less. Obviously, everyone getting tired the higher you get, especially 30th floor and plus, no one. So these are some races I've done, the Spartan race and all the races. Now, why did I do these races? Is to challenge myself. Is to be like to myself, Asa, you've done these races. You accomplished something big for yourself. Uh, like the Spartan race. I didn't do it to win. Not 10th and 20th, 30th place. Trust me, the vertical marathon, I wasn't even planning to win. I was on the way out, and I got a call saying, you won. I'm like, what? They're like, come in, get your price. I'm like, oh, amazing. So it's all to challenge myself. And you know, having that positive mind is very important, as I said. Do I have another goal set? Yes, I do. I have an Ironman coming up in August. This is the first Ironman I've, I am going to do in my life. To be honest, I don't know if I'm going to, something's going to happen to me halfway through because it's a long distance. I don't know if you guys, for those of you who don't know what an Ironman is, running, cycling, swimming, 
Long, huge amount of distance. Uh, cycling is around 80k, running is around 40k, and then swimming is like 4.8 kilometers or something. So I'm doing it in Switzerland. I'm doing it to represent the UAE itself. I don't know if I'm going to last, to be honest. It might take me more than 20 hours, God knows. But why am I doing it yet again? It's because it's a goal that I set for myself and something that I could train towards to. Have I started training for it? Yes, I did start training for it around two months ago. A lot of training, at least two hours of training. Very, very important. But it's just the goal that I set for. And to be honest, if I don't even finish it, if I only do the swimming part and I don't finish the running and the cycling, I'll be happy. I'll be like, okay, at least I've done something. I accomplished something. So, of course, after losing weight as well, you know, being a young entrepreneur in Marathi, a 25-year-old, I'm like, why not go and inspire as many people as possible, not only in the UAE, but around the world itself and the Middle East. It's very important to help people who are suffering with obesity and diabetes. I've been through that. It's a very, very tough life, especially being overweight. You know, as I said, not getting involved in festival activities and being bullied. Being bullied was the hardest thing, especially when you're in school. Now, when I go give talks to schools, and you see these students that are overweight, and you want to help them, you want to inspire them, and be like, you could do this. It's all about your mind, and it's all about the lifestyle. Very important. So here's some pictures of my talks that I've recently done. So, now, the picture here is on the left side when I was, again, in Switzerland, munching on some cookies. I wanted to say some protein bars, but it doesn't look like I'm eating a protein bar. And a question for you guys. How does modern life, or how does modern living, affect us now? Does these two pictures look very familiar to you? Easy. Social media. Technology. You're on your phone. Instagram, I'm on Instagram at least five hours a day. Snapchat, Go Pokemon, or I don't know what even that's called, but something like that. So the amount of time we spend on social media and technology as well, computers, laptops, it does as well affect us from living a healthier lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, I would say. It could affect mental health, you know, on your computer 24-7, not having that social life as well, and on your phone 24-7, you're just on your phone like this. We know when we're, I'm, okay, fine, I'm gonna blame myself. When I'm out with the family on Friday lunch, we're all sitting down, hi, nice to see you, nice to see you guys. Silence, everyone's on their phone for one hour. And the food comes, feast, 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 eat, 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 back on your phone again. And then obviously the ladies and the guys snaps each food. That's what I do. I'm being honest, I do that. But I'm just trying to tell you how technology and social media is affecting the way we live as well and our lifestyles as well. Sorry about the picture on the left, by the way. Uh, no, this was a recent picture. This was just a strength transformation that I've done. I had a photo shoot on December. And, you know, I had to, so put in mind, when I lost a lot of weight, it was mostly focused on cardio. So when I did cardio, I was very skinny. So I reached a point where I had no mu any muscle definition or anything. So I had to start putting some muscles on. So this is a five month gap or six months gap in between still working towards it, it does take a lot of time to build muscle. Now, I get a lot of questions saying, is cardio better or strength training? Put in mind, when you do cardio, when you're running uh, on a treadmill, the amount of calories you lose, you're only losing that calories while you're running. Whereas strength training, when you, let's say, you do weights, you burn at least eight hours, seven to eight hours after your training. Oops, yeah. So, this was just a general uh, story about my uh, weight loss journey. It changed me 360 degrees. Uh, I feel very happy, very active, very positive. Uh, of course, my goal now is to give back to my community, is to inspire as many people as possible around the world, and being like, you guys could do it. And I stand here proof that every single one of you here could do it and live a healthier lifestyle. Thank you very much for your time, and I wish you guys all the best.